Before we start, I want to let you know that I'm using a true first person character for this tutorial series. I made a tutorial for that, a link is in the description, but you could also use any other first person character or it should even work with third person. Additionally, I made a basic HUD setup that just shows a widget with a small centered crosshair image. That's not necessary, but should be helpful for tracing stuff. If you don't know how to set up such a HUD, there's a tutorial link in the description. So, in the first part, we're creating an interaction area actor, then an actor component that will let our character trace this interaction area actor. So, let us start. In the content folder, I'll create a new folder and call it interaction. And in this interaction folder, I create another folder and call it interaction area. Let's open this folder and in here create a new blueprint class actor and call it bp underscore interaction area. So now let's open this and add here a new box collision. We can just leave it on this size. Everything is fine. We have to change one thing and that is the collision. If you click on the box, go here to collision and set the collision preset to custom. Expand it here. Set everything on ignore except the visibility on block. Now compile and go to the event graph and in here we can delete this actually and create a new variable a bool call it focused and in here we create a new custom event and now we call it toggle focus for the moment that will just set the this boolean and we're doing stuff in here later. So just compile, we can actually close that. And now next step is we're creating our, our actor component. So go here to the interaction folder again and right click blueprint class actor component. I'll call it ac underscore interaction trace. And let's open it. So, um, go here to the class defaults, and I will disable the tick. Start with tick enabled. I will disable it. So, why am I doing this? That's because um, we have here our event tick, and that should handle our line trace. And we want to make sure that this line trace should only be executed on our owning client. The problem in multiplayer would be, because every character has this actor component, that you would not only on your own character would execute the event tick and calculate the line trace, but on all other characters. So we are just disabling it here. Then in a minute I will go to the character and enable it locally only for the only only for the local owning player. So then we can actually leave the tick interval on zero, but you could also say like maybe 0 0.03 if you say like it's enough that the line trace is only triggered a bit less. For example, 0 0.03 would mean about 33 times per second. In my opinion, that's enough. So we could also save a little bit performance here. So let's just compile and save. And now we are adding this actor component to our character. So here our character. And we're just adding the interact trace, interaction trace actor component here. And now on in our character event graph on event begin play. Wanna execute a function that sets up our or starts our interaction trace actor component on the locally on the player. 
So for that, I will create just a new function in our player um, and call it uh, setup interaction trace. And in here, we are just checking is locally controlled. So if this character is locally controlled, and if yes, then, or if true, we want to get our interaction trace and set component tick enabled. So, and enable it here. Just compile and save again. And now the next step would be going to our interaction trace. So now we're done here with our character, we can just make sure, for just forgot it, make sure our event we can play will execute this function here, set up interaction trace. So now for this tutorial, for this part, we're done with our character, so we can just close it and now focus on our interaction trace component. Here, um, we don't need the event we can play, we need the event tick. So let's create a new function for our line trace. We'll just call it trace. Go back to the event graph and make sure that this trace function will be executed on event tick. So let's go here in our trace function and in here, when I execute, line trace by channel. Make sure it's not multi-line trace by channel or sphere trace by channel, just line trace by channel. For the start location, we're just taking our camera location. To do that, we can just get player camera manager and from the return value, we can get the actor location. And then we have without a specific camera reference, we just got our camera location and just can connect it with the start of the line trace. For the end of the line trace, we are getting the uh, actor rotation of our camera, getting the forward vector, so this, act, this forward vector, so this vector is now pointing in the direction we're looking at and or the camera is rotated and this getting forward node will return a vector of the length of one but we can just multiply it and here right click on this pin convert it to a float you can just multiply it with a bigger value and then this will represent our length of the trace so just promote this to a new float variable. We'll just call it length. Just compile and set it directly here, for example, on 400. So now our line trace will have a length of 400. And before we connect this with the end, we want to also make sure that this will be starting at the camera location. So just from the camera, location here, getting the plus, connecting it here, and this will be our end. So in this line trace, I want to check if there's any result. So if, if there's no result, for example, if we're looking in, in the air, this will be on, this will be false. But if we are looking on any actor, if it trace anything, this will be true. So let's focus on true first. We also want to break the hit result, expand it here. And now add here another branch. I want to get here the hit actor and promote it to a variable. We'll just call it focused actor. I want to set it here on true. I'll come to this branch in a second. 
can just collapse it again. So, um, everything that should be executed here, if we are focusing an actor, should be only triggered once per actor. So we just want to make sure in this branch now, in this check, if we are if we trace anything, if it's a new actor we are tracing, or if it's the same actor we traced in the in the in the frame before. So to do that, we're just getting the hit actor that we stored already here. So we're just getting the hit actor. Double click here to create a new rebuild node. And just check with a unequal. Just want to connect it here again. Can make this here. Just want to make sure, or just want to check that it unequals the focused actor we are storing here. So everything here will be executed only once per actor until we are tracing a new actor or later if we are tracing nothing and then go back to the actor. So next step, we need a another function that will handle our direct connection to our interaction uh, interaction area actor that we created before. So let's just create a new function and call it like trace interaction area. In here, I'll create just new input, call it, for example, trace boolean. And before we do something here, we can just go back to our trace function and just call it here. And on the faults, so on the faults, we want to set it on faults. If you're not, if you're, for example, look in the air, this should be, of course, set to false. But if we're tracing an actor, we want to make sure for trace, if we are actually uh, tracing any actor or if it is specifically an actor of the class of uh, the interaction area. So just from the hit actor here, just get it here and get the get class node. And here we want to check if that equals our BP interaction area actor class. If that is true, then we know we actually traced here an actor of this interaction area class if not, then it's the same as we're looking in the air. We're not tracing an interaction area actor. So what we can do now is just checking if our line trace is working correctly. For that, we can go here to draw debug type and just for duration draw it. Now we can play and check if our line trace is uh, executing, firing, and as you can see, it works fine from our camera. And um, yeah, so this function trace and action area will have the direct casting and connection to our interaction area. Um, but we won't do this in this part. We're doing this in the next part. So that's it from this first part. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.